We're featuring the Hemmer feet for the foot of the month, and these are the Bernina Hemmer feet, number 61 through 69. Now, it seems pretty awesome to have that many Hemmer feet, but they really do have uses for different types of fabric. First off, you notice that some feet have a single hole in them, so that would be only for straight stitching. Some have zigzags, so you could do decorative stitches or like a shell hem on some of the different fabrics. And then really what you look at is underneath the presser foot, there is gonna be a groove. That groove or channel is gonna be the final seam that the hem is going to be. So if you're unsure of which one to pick, you can almost just peek, pick them up, peek underneath, and see, wow, that one's gonna be bigger. So I could use that with heavier fabrics. Some of these are gonna allow for a seam that's a little bit more rounded. Some are set up for fabrics that are super lightweight. And with that, you'd almost wanna use a straight stitched throat plate when working with really fine fabrics. Otherwise, that fabric could get kind of pushed down into the throat plate, and the straight stitch throat plate is gonna help prevent that. Once you've selected the foot, based on the fabric that you are hemming, there is some of the feet do not have a little groove on the side. If you ever have a foot that is that way and you wanna put the needle thread down below, little quick trick off to the side here, just hold the bobbin thread, take one stitch, let that needle thread just kinda of get sloppy underneath, take the thread in your hands and drag it through. That will put the fabric down below. One of the things that uh, is the hardest part of a hemmer foot is how to get it started. My go-to method is the fact of just taking your fingers and turning it two times as small as you possibly can. Once it is turned, because that is what a hemmer foot is going to do, is it's going to tuck underneath the raw edge so it's completely sealed in. Now these pins are my finest pins that I always use. They are the Clover Quilting Pins Fine, and that is the only thing that you find on my magnetic pin cushion. They're just the easiest to use. They go through the fabric the easiest, and especially when working with fine fabrics here, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. We're gonna next lower down the presser foot onto the hem where I've pinned it just to hold it. Goes, everything goes underneath the foot first. Lower the needle into the hem that you turned by hand. Take the pin out and then you're gonna just kinda uncurl it and roll it up into the hem or foot. That little scroll is what's gonna do all the work for you. Once you get started, the next part is actually how to hold the fabric. This can be a little bit, uh, takes a little practice, So, but once you get it uh, going, it, it really consists of holding your fabric with your fingers just enough so there's fabric coming over and touching this little toe of the foot in front. You can actually see it, then twist it a second time as it sends it down towards the needle. But if you get too much fabric in, or not enough, what you wanna do is instead of trying to pull it over, is actually use your left hand and finger touch it so you're pushing the fabric back into where it needs to be. A couple of practice runs on some sample fabric will really get you good at running the hemmer feet. If you need to, sometimes you do need to move the needle position. This is the one foot with the zigzag opening, so you can do the adjustments as needed. Of course, make sure you don't have that straight stitch throat plate on. It's handy, but not when you're gonna be moving that needle position side to side. Once you're going, just let it run. When you're doing something that is circular, what you wanna do first is stay stitch the edge before you send it down through the hemmer foot. That is going to help it so it doesn't stretch out and become fluted along the edges. Now, the foot 63 of the Bernina Hemmer Foot Collection is the one that I go to the most. It is kind of a medium size. It also has a channel on the back that actually doesn't go all the way to the back of the foot, helping out with the curves. That way the fabric can kind of feed off to the side after it's been hemmed. When stitching around four corners, the best way to do is go ahead and sew your first line, but instead of starting here and sewing again, this bulk being where you have to kind of start, start from the opposite corner and approach the bulk. By doing this though, when, when you get to the end, and that thickness is going into the hemmer foot, pull on the fabric with your finger this way, kind of diagonally, stretch it out. And what it does is it makes it so the hem is not kind of squished off the end when you're all said and done. And then you'll end up with a very nice corner. Now, once you get around all four corners, yes, you will have one bulk in that you're gonna have to start on. So if you need help, 
do this. You can always have a little bit of, say, a washable stabilizer stitched to the end of your fabric. That will kind of help as a runway. You can get this started in the hemmer foot, and that will help, help kind of drag the fabric in where there might be a bulk or a seam in the way. If you want to add some lace or trim while making your hemmed seam, now this is the fabric right side up, so that fabric is technically the wrong side, but it actually looks really pretty once you have just laid your trim or lace inside and it's just catching it as it goes. On lightweight or stretchy fabrics, you could select an overlock stitch and set it up so it'll actually jump off the edge, make the stitch length a little longer, and this will create a pretty shell hem.